Hi, I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and I'm so glad you're here today because I have a secret. It shouldn't be a secret, but many quilters don't know this secret, and we're going to talk about it today because every quilter needs to know how to make perfect half square triangle points. Now, check this out. I'm going to show you how to get nice points on all your HST blocks so when you're quilting, you don't have to worry about flipping back and forth and whether those seams are lining up and if you're losing your points or are they too far there's a couple quick easy techniques i'm going to share those tips with you and you will be making perfect points every time now take a look at these quilts behind me these are um large half square triangle blocks that's even better about this tutorial we're using huge blocks 18 inch squares so grab your fat quarters we're going to trim off the sides make some squares make a bunch of half square triangles and we've got two sizes here the larger blue one is a large laptop and the smaller pink and purple is more of a a small laptop to a baby it's about 40 inches square now i'm going to also include a printable if you'd like down below that you can print a free tutorial on how to do this so you'll have a quick reference that can sometimes be handy plus there is a website that does a pictorial review of how these uh, squares go together i'm really excited to share this with you so let's go ahead and get started but first please go ahead and subscribe to my channel that would be great i want to let all the other quilters know how much fun we're having how much information we're sharing and quilters love to share information. So let's get everybody involved. Enjoy the quilting, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this new technique. Here are some colors that are going to make a really fun quilt. I'm still on my quest to work through my fat quarters and diminish that pile. I have a uh, plan to go to Quilt Con in the not too distant future. And my goal is to buy lots of fabric, but I need to make plenty of room for it. So here I am quilting with some kind of wild and crazy colors, but sometimes putting yourself into a position that you need to choose colors outside your comfort zone can be a lot of fun because you'll create something that you might never otherwise have chosen or thought to do. And that's exactly where I am here. Now this quilt is going to take eight fat quarters. And I've divided them into two piles. And each pile has two dominant fat quarters and two backgrounds. This is two dominant and two backgrounds. And I wanted the dominants to be a, a bolder, bolder print so they're prominent, they stand out, and they're going to carry through the uh, half square triangle pattern that we're working with. And the backgrounds have this sort of yellow, pinky, peachy color. These are mostly pink and peach with just the littlest bit of yellow. So it's it's going to have a lot of variation in color, but it, it all works well here. I like how it looks. I'm excited about it. And I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Now, I had some extra pieces along the way. This is a sort of a duplicate of that and some extra pinks. I wasn't sure. I had thought about putting this here but i didn't want the background to be this bold with that bright almost a fuchsia that it would detract from the the dominant or my focal fabric so i may use that at some point for something but if nothing else these will work out really well for my quilt bag um i had looked at this over on this side because i like these colors but I didn't want to bring a lot of blue in. There is some blue here, so I could probably get away with it. But again, there's so much color going on here, I didn't want to detract because while these have a nice print, they're not a, a stark contrast. They're not a, 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 con, a strong contrast. And we want to keep those as our focal fabrics. And so this needs to kind of be able to lay in the background. Half square triangles are a lot of fun to work with, but they do require some pre precision in the way that they're cut. And due to that requirement, we want to make sure we get any of the heavy wrinkles out. So let me go ahead. I'm going to press these and then I'm going to show you how to put them together to make our 
um, half square triangles. We're going to be making eight at a time, and I'm going to show you some of the tricks why it's important to take some of the steps that we're doing here. So hang on, let me get these pressed. I'll be right back. I paired up my eight back quarters into four pairs, and I just want to show you what I've come up with here. Now, this is one of the dominant prints, and this is a background. But take a look. This, this was actually a metallic fabric, and I'm using the back side of it because those colors work perfect, but I don't want metallic in this quilt, and I generally don't want to include a metallic when it's the only metallic. You know, if I have multiple fabrics, that's one thing. But in this case, that's not the way it's going. So let's go ahead and take a look at this here. Here's our, our really bold purple with some yellow, green, blue. It's got a little bit of everything. And so I took the bolder yellow with the pinky colors in the back because those are going to stand up against these bold prints. If this were against this orange, they'd be too much alike. See how this background, ugh, get rid of that metallic. See how this background tends to be a duller color and not as bright, not as saturated. So therefore, those are going to work well. Okay, here's one. Um, I just, I did want to show you, not all fat quarters are created equal. Now, if I line up this corner down here, I've got, I always put my salvages to the left because I cut to the right. And however that works for you, just keep in mind, keep your salvages together so you have a common cut edge that you can work from. But see how I am, you know, lining this up down here. And this is usually my first step when I'm cutting fat quarters, is I line up this bottom corner and the baseline fabric and pull all that through. And look, I've got, you know, things are distorted now. It's possible it got stretched. Sometimes you can give this a little diagonal pull to make it go the way you want. And it could be because of the way it was stored or the way that it was folded. Now, see, that did help quite a bit. Um, but I'm losing some down here. So I'm still going to lose some there. And that's just sometimes the way it works when you're using multiple fat quarters from different... Um, different stores, different origins, different places, whether it's cut by the manufacturer, whether it's cut by the shop. See how old this one is? This was actually torn. That goes way back. So, so that's why I'm using up a lot of these fabrics because these fat quarters are 10 plus years old. Some of them are 20 and it's time to move on with them. It's time to get, you know, some new colors, some new life into my, my uh, fat quarter stash and that's where I'm headed. So Again, when you're cutting your fat quarters, you just sort of need to take into consideration what you're working with. Every little every little pair you put together is going to be a bit different. So I have my salvages over here, and I've got my bottom line here, and I'm going to lose this part. And that's all right. So when I start, I'm going to cut this first. Now, this one turned out um, to be with the light, but look at, here's the probably the right side. It has really dark spots, and I don't want to go there. I want it to be more of a background, so I'm going to use the back side of the fabric. And that's another wonderful thing with batiks, is essentially they're reversible. You can use either side. Generally, there's not much difference, but in this particular case, those dark colors are quite dark, and I didn't want to go there. But on this side, you still get all those colors sort of washed together, the pinks, the orangey, yellow, purple, even just a bit of blue in there. And so that's going to work out really well. So the next thing I'm going to do is put my fat quarters together, and I'm going to cut two pair at a time. So four fat quarters at once. And what I'm going to do is cut them into 18 inch squares. We are making some very large half square triangles. And that is going to make this quilt go quickly. It's a great way to learn how to use fat cord, or excuse me, how to use, uh, what are we making? Half square triangles, because it allows you to do it on a larger scale. Sometimes working with something on a small scale can really be challenging because it's so tight and fussy in those corners that you're not sure 
that it's going together correctly. It's hard to get a good visual of what you're doing and how it's all going to finish out. So this was one that when I, probably one of my first half square triangle quilts that I made. And I really love how it turned out. And of course, it's in my favorite colors, as you saw, that's, that's where I like to go. And so I'm going to go ahead and get these four cut. Now, I need to keep in mind where my shortest edge is. And that works out well because my bottom and top fabric are right at the same spot. And I'll need to cut a little bit off here. So I'm just going to line this up where I can get a good even cut. And I want to put this together. Okay, so you see where we are? We have our 21 across, our 18 high, and our selvages to one side. And now, with that all lined up nice and pretty, I am going to cut my side first. And that's going to line up there, and that's going to line up here. So I'm just, I just want to make sure I'm not, I'm going to take that in just a little bit, about an eighth of an inch, because there seems to be a little bit of a corner missing in there. You know, back in the old days, you could go into a fabric store and ask for a sample, and they would cut the corner off the bolt of fabric, like, you know, a little triangle, not more than an inch or so. Well, that's okay when you're making clothing because generally corners don't matter. But obviously that doesn't happen with quilting. And every once in a while when I see a corner missing like that, I think, oh, did someone come in and, and uh, you know, trim that off to get a sample to see how it would look with other fabrics? Which is possible, but unlikely. It's just one of those things that, you know, you see as you go through things that uh, repeat themselves over time. So I want this to be 18 inches. I've got it set on my one inch, so I'm going to cut it on the 19 line. I'm going to take a look and make sure everybody is good. And because that one looks a little bit iffy, I'm going to move this up because I'm allowing some trim down here on the bottom edge. But yet at the same time, I want to make sure that all my fabrics are going to be 19, there's the line right there that I need, um, going to be visible. So how far am I from there? All right. Well, actually, it's kind of right on the line, so I think we're going to be okay. We'll cut this. I have 18, and I'm going to come over 18 inches, and we've got 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. And so you should have approximately 4 inches left on this strip. Um, and in the original quilt, I used this strip to make smaller half square triangles, and I used those in a border, and that came out really fun. Alternatively, you can also use it for your backing. So there are a lot of, a lot of different options. So hang on to these pieces, and we'll see what we can come up with. Now, I'm going to switch this around. It's really nice to have one of those rotating turn, uh, what do we call them, a turntable cutting board. And that just makes it simple to move this and not have to lift it. But I've not seen one that works with this large a piece. Most of them are like 12 inches, I think. There might be some at 16. But... I haven't seen any for these big ones, so I'm just going to trim this bottom edge off, and it gets rid of all that junk there. And here we are. So we have our four fabrics, and we are going to get this ready to sew. Now, I want to make sure my fabrics are right side together, because I'm going to sew these at this point into our triangles, or at least the first step. So I can see, I know that's going to be on the outside, and I'm going to turn that one around because I'm trying to decide which I like better. I think that brown is awfully dark on the back side, and it's not quite so dark here, 
So maybe I might like that better and keep this darker brown to the top. So I'm going right back where I started and I'm going to keep it there, but I want to line these up well. And so the first thing I'm going to do with these lined up is draw a line from corner to corner. So you're going to get your ruler and here's the tricky part. I forgot about this. We are cutting across a an 18 inch square and when you cut across a diagonal your diagonal is longer than the sides so when you cut here it's going to be longer than either of these sides and given that this is a 24 inch ruler it barely fits but what I can do is as long as I put my corners on my 45 line, okay, and it'll say 45 degrees on here, because 45 is going to cut a square right in half. And I'm going to line this ruler up with the line outside, it, and it's an, a one-inch line, so obviously someone really took into account various cutting techniques when they made these mats because I find so many quick and easy ways to do it. So I'm lined up here at one inch, lined up here at one inch. My corners of the fabric are right on the line. So I am going to draw, and I'm using a pen and I'm okay with that because where I'm drawing here, I'm gonna just kind of hand do that. Where I'm, I'm drawing my line is going to be cut so it'll never be seen. Now, I have those same lines on this side, and I want to line this up here and here, making sure those are all in the corner. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Now, this you see is two inches, so I want to line that up two inches off my, my uh, corner that I'm going to draw from. And I've got that on there, so I'll go here. And because that line is there, I can line, let's do it up here. I think you might be able to see better. I can line my ruler up right along there. And let's see if I get it right here so that I see that line there. And then I make sure it's lined up right here. I can come in and finish finish that line. It comes in just a little short there, but I can. What I what I'll do there is I'll just I'll sew right from the corner. When you're using any writing utensil against the side of the ruler, it is going to bump it out a little bit. So keep that in mind. You know, if you see something that's off a little bit, you can adjust it as you sew. Now this line is going to be our guideline. We are going to sew down each side of these lines. So one quarter inch and one quarter inch down both sides, one quarter inch, one quarter inch down each of these sides as well. What I'm going to do is put a pin in each side to hold everything together inside these large triangles because I don't want the fabric shifting and I don't want it stretching. That's our first step. We cut all our fat quarters into 18 inch squares and then we draw our diagonals. So let me get some of these sewn up and show you what that's going to look like and then where our next step will take us. Here's an 18 inch square that's sewn together, sewn on the diagonal. We give it a light pressing. Don't iron it because you're, you're going to kind of stretch the fabric. Remember, this is on the bias and you can see even just by sewing, I don't know if that shows up on the camera, it's almost a little bit of wrinkle through there where the fabric has stretched and that's not uncommon when you're working with, uh, with the bias. Now we're going to take this and sew right down the center. So we're going to put this in our 18 inch and because of the seams through the center, your block has come in a little. It's just a tad bit smaller. So center it in your 18 inch block area. And then what we want to do is cut it right down the middle. And as we're cutting, we're going to cut where the sewing lines crossed each other. Do vertical, horizontal, whatever order you prefer, but just cut through the middle. And as you're doing that, you can see 
that you're cutting from corner to corner in that little square. Now, I already took a first step, so what we would do is take this block, and because I already did this, this is sort of a cheat, I jumped ahead, I'll set that aside, but we take this block and we go from corner to corner. And it doesn't really matter that it's on a grid or not, because everything's cut, everything is sewn. All we need to do at this point is uh, just cut them in half. So again, this is already trimmed. Oh, that's right. Those are the head start ones. And then this one, I'm going to hold this up so you can see. I think you can probably see those stretchy little lines. And that's what happens on the bias. So if you don't take precautions to work around that, then you can end up with a very wonky block that isn't going to fit together with anything else very well at all. So once we get to this point, we are going to take our blocks and we're going to press them. I'm going to have everything pressed to the darker fabric. I have one set here of eight because now we have eight of these triangles, these half square triangles. And then I have another eight. So there's my first set. Those are the ones that are going to go together. This is the beginning of my second set. And when I was doing that last block, I had a bit of a challenge arise, a bit of a surprise. I did not realize that this fabric was pre-cut and I had used part of it and I only had 16 by 18. So that wasn't going to work. So what I did is I cut it down. I kept it at the 18, but I cut it down to nine inches. So by doing that, I have half of my block. So then I found another piece. Remember the piece I wasn't going to use because of the blue? Well, we're going to throw it in. And what we're going to do here now is do our vertical cut because the horizontal is already done. And we have the same fabric on the back here. Let's go ahead and line this up in our 18 inch and see, see where it falls. Everything looks nice and even going to put it on nine inches and then we're going to cut this in half like that. So now we have these four blocks and we're going to cut each of these in half so that gives us our eight half square triangles. Again like I said this is much larger than what most patterns call for but it's a fun way to learn half square triangles because it's easy. Working with a larger piece just gives you a bit more to hang on to, and it's a visual. It helps you understand better what you're doing, what the expectations are, and, uh, you know, seam allowance just sort of works easier when you have a larger piece than a bunch of little, little minis. So you can do the same. Now, see, this piece here measures 9 by 9, right? So you could do the same thing with a layer cake, a 10-inch square. And we would draw diagonal lines, we would sew, then we would make it cut this way, and our blocks would be that much smaller. So this is another way you can do it, and then you can even take it down to a charm square if you like making minis. I haven't tried it. I don't know that I'm ready to step into that, but maybe that's something we can do on another day is how small can you make a half square triangle. That would be fun. So there we go. Problem solved. I wanted to show you how I did that in case you come up with some fabrics every once in a while when we get a really good deal on fabric. Maybe a quarter yard comes in a 9 inch by 42. Perfect. You've got your 9 inch. Cut it up. Make your blocks and you're good to go. Now what I'm going to do is press the rest of these and I'm going to show you how we're putting this quilt together. Isn't that amazing how quickly that went? I love making these. It does go very quickly. We are going to have to do a little bit of uh, trimming, but that's not going to take long, and we can do that sitting down. So let's get started. With our half square triangles finished, it's time to do our trimming. We want to make sure our blocks are all going to not only be square, but the same size. And this is where a square ruler comes in really handy. Now, I don't do a lot of half square triangles, so I just use 
my um, my square that I have. It's a 12 inch. Now for visual purposes, so you can see on the screen, I laid a piece of tape across this 45 degree and I made a red line. So you can hopefully see what I'm doing. Um, but the half square triangle rulers have little notches to cut off the corners. And if you make a lot of them, that's really going to be helpful and speed up the process. But I'm gonna go ahead and just work from here. And let's flip these around. What I'm going to do is put these so they run along the 45 degree angle. And they're gonna go corner to corner like this. Now, you can see that they're not perfectly straight and that's okay because that's sort of what happens we're going to put our square right here and line it up and it looks like our block is going to run one two three four five six seven about eight and a half which isn't unusual um a lot of times you could maybe get, you know, just a tad, like an eighth of an inch more, but I'd rather just stick with the, you know, half or quarter inch than get into that, that minutia. So I'm going to cut here. And fortunately, this is nice and straight. I don't have to trim that. And now I'm going to turn it the other way. This is also another place, uh, another point where it's handy to have those rotating mats. And, uh, but again, it's not something I use a lot and I don't have a lot of room to put a lot of those kinds of extra, extra bits and parts. Let's go ahead and put this one in. We're going to go right on the line, it's going to be right there. We want to make sure this line measures up and we want to make sure here, and we're going to measure this right up there. Now I'm going to have to do a little bit of a turn in order to get this side here. But as you pull it away, you see what you're taking off is pretty minimal. But because we're working with diagonals and triangles, when we're putting our blocks together, it's really important that these corners are nice and square. So it will be worth your time to go ahead and get everything trimmed down. So let's do that first, and then we're going to put our blocks together, and I'll show you how we're making this quilt. All 32 blocks are ready to go, and this is what our chevron pattern is going to look like. We're going to have five rows by six and use 30 of our 32 blocks. And what I want to show you is how we're going to alternate these rows. So we're going to have this, this more... Um, neutral row alternating with the bright purple row and that's going to make these really stand out i'm going to put this together and show you what it's going to look like then i'll show you also some really important techniques about how to make great points perfect points on your half square triangles are definitely worth trying to achieve because it's going to make your finished quilt look so much better. I'm going to show you a way that's going to really make it much easier, much simpler for you. It's just a quick and easy technique. I'm going to go ahead and start and get the first couple rows together and then I'll show you where we go from there. Well we have our quilt coming together and I wanted to show you how this looks. I did get all the rows sewn together except for the top one. I wanted to leave that open. And here's an example of how we want these points to look. So you can see we have where the two large triangles come together with a straight seam, and then we have two triangles coming together with a point. And it's that little spot right there that we want to make sure gets nice and close. And you see how that point is just a little bit away from the seam. I'm going to show you right now how to do that. So remember we have 32 blocks but we're only using 30. So I took the other two and I made a sample. 
And what I want you to see, and I'm going to get right up in the camera here, there's three different seam allowances. This is the seam allowance I took in the beginning. You can see the pen line. That's my standard quarter inch seam. When I did the chain piecing and put the blocks together, notice how this seam is just a little bit wider than a quarter inch. Now, what that does is that brings this point more than a quarter inch away from the seam allowance. So by taking a bigger seam, not much, we're just talking a couple threads worth, just taking that bigger seam sets our point down. With that in place, it makes the cross seam much easier. But take a look at that. Do you notice how that seam is just a little bit narrower? So the first thing we do on the first seam is take it a bit wider and the second seam a bit narrower. And you'll see when that seam is sewn, it comes right up next to the point, but it does not cut it off. And that's the trick about half square triangles. Because the biggest problem we have is getting so close or actually cutting off that point that you don't see it. And we get all these sort of snub nose triangles that just don't look attractive at all. You can see where these come together and how they look pretty darn good. And quite honestly, I'd rather have this the tiniest bit of a space here than have my point cut off. And that's the trick. That's all you have to do is adjust your seam allowance. The first seam, you're going to take a bit wider. The second seam, you're going to go a bit narrower. And you're going to have beautiful triangles. So I'm going to finish this quilt and show you some pictures. I think it turned out wonderful. I can't wait to share it with you. Don't you just love those half square triangle blocks? They turned out great. I love how bright those purple blocks stand out and the background just fits everything together so well. And even that alternating chevron row is kind of a nice subtle contrast. I think it looks beautiful. Now, wait till you see this one. And here's the larger lap size, again with the contrast. I love how chevrons work so well with the contrast. It just makes those half square triangles pop. And the batiks, of course, a favorite of mine, I think do a great job here. So I love these quilts, whether it be the baby size, small lap quilt that was done in the pink and purple, or this beautiful turquoise quilt that's a much larger lap size. If you want to see printed details, check out the webpage. There's actually a printable tutorial that you can print out. There's no charge, and that way you can have a quick reference on, on how to make the half square triangles and how to get those blocks just perfect. We love perfect points on our half square triangles. So you all have a great day. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, and don't forget, please subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye.